This house always had a heating system, obviously, but never an air conditioning system. And that's something that the homeowners want to add, Richard. So that means a brand new HVAC plan. Right. Looked at the building and we said, okay, let's put some ducted systems in for air conditioning. And when we did, we said, you know what? We could do the ducted for both the heating and the cooling and the radiators went away. Yep. But we have a cast iron boiler right here and it wasn't that old. So we're going to reuse it to save a little bit of money. Gas fired cast iron with multiple zones. And there used to be a mess of piping all here. Most of it is gone. We're going to actually move this over closer to the chimney, mm -hmm. right here, give them a little more mechanical space and a little more open space out here. Boilers make hot water, though, and right. you're talking about a ducted system. Correct. So you're going to make that connection. We're going to use hydro air, hydro for water and air for air, obviously. So there'd be a, the equivalent of an automobile radiator coil that's going to sit in an air handler. Heated water will go down through the coil, back and forth, back and forth, this way. Mm -hmm. Air will be drawn across that coil to heat the air in the winter. So now those ducts that we're going to install will That's give right. us heat and cooling Correct. all in one. But the question is, is what type of ducts? Right. So conventional duct work in a building like this always would start with this. If it was a two or three ton system, we might need to have a duct this big. This is like a trunk line? That's right, the main trunk. And so then the challenge is, okay, so now I've got all these rooms, I do my calculation, and I've got a fan that pushes out relatively low push. Yep. Now I'm going to have a branch that goes to this room and to this room and to this room. If you don't get those sizes right, what happens in Sadly, it's the norm, not the exception. You don't have enough air to the far rooms or to right. the upstairs rooms, right, right. And, and people complain. Although you've added mechanical dampers to try yeah. to kind of refine yeah. those systems. Yeah. It could be automatic or manual, and then, but it's still hit or miss trying to get right. it to balance. And you're still stuck with a huge trunk line. That's and right. We've got finished walls, right. finished ceilings. So what we're going to do is do a small duct high velocity. We're going to put more air through a smaller duct. So this is the main trunk right here for our system, seven inch round, yeah. off of this trunk will be a series of these attenuators. And so this will come in here and branch in here. This is what you see in the room. Right. And these outlets can sit in the ceiling, in the floor, in the high sidewall. It just doesn't want to blow on people. Right. And this has a special sound attenuator here. And you know you're going to be able to fit this through the wall. Right. And look at this thing. I mean, now you've got this is the trunk line. Yeah. That's going to hide right up in a That's joist right. bay right. in a closet. We can make no it go problem. away. Beautiful. All right. All right. So then the question is, is how do we zone this system? How do we, you know, there's three different floors. So what I'm going to do is actually use one of these air handlers on each floor. Hmm. Now the way it works is air is drawn in through here and there's a hot water heating coil that will sit right here. So we can actually add that when we use right. this for heat? That's okay. right. And that will heat the air. The air continues across. See, there's another coil right here. This is for air conditioning in the summer. Yeah. And then this is a very smart blower here that pushes the air out. We can dial in the exact fan speed that we want to match and make it really quiet. So instead of those mechanical dampers, your answer to zoning is one of these each floor. That's right. right great control. That's right. But to me, I'm thinking, now I've got a piece of equipment times three yeah. inside. Yeah. And then aren't these tied to another condenser outside? So I've got three more pieces of equipment out there? There was a day that that was the answer. But now let me show you. actually got a pretty good spot here on the side of the That's house right. for mechanicals. Yeah, we're on the opposite side of the driveway, and this is our entire outdoor cooling section for the whole building. J just one of these, not three of these? That's right. So conventionally, it would always be for each air handler, you have a separate condenser right here, one, two, three in this yep. example. They're always at full blast. This one is so smart, it's the compressor can vary the amount of cooling power, and it can split it to go into for one, two, or three air handlers right here. So you have a pair of refrigerant line sets that go from here into unit number three. Hmm. It would cool there, come back here, dump heat outside, leaving cool inside the building. So this thing can send coolant equally to one, two, and three zones, or maybe say shut down two and three, That's send right. it all to one. Right. It knows that. It is very, very smart. Wow, and small. Homeowners want to add AC, so we're going to put in a ducted system. Now, if it were a new house, ducts are no problem. You simply design around them, and they're easy to get through the walls and ceilings. But in an old house, finding room for ductwork is always a challenge. So we've decided to use a high-velocity system, which uses these actual small, flexible ducts. But even with these, it is a real puzzle trying to figure out where everything goes in the walls and ceiling. And the guy solving that puzzle for us is Brian Palin. Hey, Brian, how you doing? How you doing, Kevin? All right. So I know somewhere in the system we've got these um, small flexible ducts, but we also have air handlers at the head of the system, right? Yes. Where are those going? One is going to be in the attic, one is going to be in the basement. Yeah. And the attic one is very easy to get to, and the basement is very easy to get to. Attic one services the third floor, basement comes up services the first floor. Yes. So we're missing the middle floor. That's the difficult one. That's the one that has to go in the knee wall. 
This knee wall up here? Right here, yeah. So why the knee wall? Well, there's actually quite a bit of room there. Yeah. Easily access to service it. All right. The problem is getting the ductwork from one end of the building all the way around to the master. Ah, so master bedroom's on that side. Yeah. We gotta get over there. Right. How are you gonna get from one side to the other? Uh, well, we had thought about going up and over, up the attic and then down. Yeah. But the framing wasn't big enough. So when you say the framing isn't big enough, I mean, you have actually got to run not just these small ones, but this bigger one right, right here. Seven inches. And that's not going to fit in the rafter bay or not going to fit well? Right. It's only five inches. And then the insulation, you wouldn't have any in the bay. Oh. Ice dams. Yeah, we don't need more ice dams in this house. Right. Another way we're thinking is going through the floor. The problem with that is we'd have to cut the floor out, cut the sheetrock out below us, we take up the full bay. We don't know if there's plumbing in the bay, mm. and we don't know if there's any going to be any lights in the bay. Because mm. once I take that seven-inch pipe and put it in that bay, it's mine. There's no room. Doesn't sound like you like either of those options. No, I don't like either of them. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Well, I actually found a. There's a big hole. The knee wall goes all the way down here. It turns, and believe it or not, there's a big void here. Really? Knee wall, right there. No kidding. So and I'm the ductwork actually can fit right through there. Knee walls on this side don't surprise me at all. I mean, you can actually see, but knee walls sort of on these gable ends where the windows are, right. that's surprising that you've got a hole there. Uh, me too. It's right below the window. You can see the, the shelf right there. Where does this go? It's going to continue in this knee wall, continue to over where Tommy had cut the <laughs> hole. Into here, which we could get into, you and score. then there's right, and then there's a big knee wall here, and that wow. continues all the way over into the master bedroom area. Air handle over there, knee walls wrapping that duck all the way around to this corner right there, wrapping it around the house. Right. Can you do that? I mean, aren't the rules yeah. on how far you can it's, go? It's better to run the, the plenum, more plenum, than attenuator. So you could run something this size all the way around, no problem. Yep. Beautiful, and then just keep these short runs into the rooms. Yeah. So are you ready to start connecting these and running them? Yes. Can we see that? Sure. All right. So this is sort of the main supply line? Yeah, this is a seven inch plenum. All right. And the size of the pipe is determined by the size of the air. Okay. And so we know that this stuff just snaps together. We snap it and then we seal it. We got duct tape, the real duct tape. Yeah, seal tape. So the tape means that this thing's never going to come apart uh, any time in the future. Right. And also for leaks. So this is it's it's a high velocity and it, there's so much pressure we don't want it to leak at all. Okay. Good. Now we want to insulate it. So right here you've got a fiberglass piece of insulation. Yeah. And then you yep. got a foil cover? Yep, just like the attenuator. Just make it right on like that. We have an attenuator we have to put in here for that master bedroom supply line. So you can do the attenuator out here? I can do this one right out here. Cool. So can I see the saddle right here? Yep. So what's the idea? That this actually just sets right down on there? That sits down in there. We screw it, drill it out. And that's what connects the that, big to the large. And that goes right on there. Beautiful. All right, so you just screw that right in? Yep. So just a sheet metal screw, huh? Yep, four of them. To hold it down and seal it. Nice. A little gasket there to make it nice and yep. tight seal. Okay. And I have this bit. This bit it's fits perfectly into the saddle. Look at that. All right, so you got the hole through there. That's nice. Yeah. I'm going to throw some sealing around it. Now we got to get the insulation tight. And here's another gasket to help seal it, the attenuator. No, oh, I see. So this is how we make over. Yeah. And we'll take that. We squeeze that nice and tight. There you go. We gotta make the rest of the connection inside the knee wall. Okay. Okay. 
So seven inch connected right there. So you're ready to make this connection between attenuator and your plenum? Yep. All right, I'm gonna pull this off another gasket and put the black one on. And that just is what? That's just adhesion there? It just yeah, sticks that'll to it. help hold the insulation. So when I tape it, the insulation will actually go in here mm -hmm. and another tight connection. So no leaks. And this silver ring is what holds it onto the saddle. It slides over the attenuator, and then the attenuator slides onto the saddle and has two bumps there. And then the ring goes on the other side of the bump, and we clamp it. Well, you are all about your connections and making them tight, huh? Oh, yeah. We don't want any uh, leaks. We want all insulation where it should be. All right, so that's one connection right there. In terms of running all of the ductwork for the entire house, how many days to do that? Probably seven to ten. Seven to ten. All right, a lot of work. All right, well, oh, thank yeah. you, Brian. Well, thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.